Hey guys, Jake here, Habitat Solutions. Um, the following video, I just wanted to show you how I've been managing my mixed uh, warm season grasses that have plenty of broad leaves and other native species mixed in with them and how it started out as a mistake but then I developed it because I found the deer used it so much more than just straight switchgrass. So I hope you enjoy this video and you learn a couple of things and be sure to look forward to the next series on it where I get into a lot of interesting details that when you have large expanses of grasses, how do you get deer close to you where you want to hunt them? This was exactly what I had been hoping to finally see in my mixed stand of native warm season grasses. Velvet bucks moving and feeding about on native broad leaves and forbs in non-traditional food source areas. For six to ten weeks, each late May through July, as the new forb growth takes over inside these mixed fields, I often get a chance to observe local bucks and some does and fawns using these three fields. I first established back in 2004 as structural cover, food, and transition zones. Many hunters and landowners, when envisioning native grass fields, often picture something like this. A vast, tall, thick monoculture of grass habitat, and plenty of pheasant hunters have good reasons to, because of the nesting, brooding, and overwintering protections that, that these large grass expanses provide. For many reasons, my fields that were enrolled in and supervised by my local NRCS office didn't develop into that pristine stand of the four component native grasses and wildflowers that were planted by their suggested contractor at the time. For that I am thankful as this gave me a window of opportunity to observe the benefits of plant diversity for white-tailed deer use, bedding, and movement patterns. I found out by mistake that having a somewhat failed native warm season grass planting that the local deer around my farm really preferred to use the areas where there was just as much goldenrod, pigweed, the occasional mullein, and other native volunteer broadleaves as structural cover and mid-spring food sources. I believe that with all the goldenrod, pigweed, and other broadleaves that are mixed in, the deer use this much more than if it were a clean stand of native grasses. Okay, I'm out here walking at noon like I normally do every day with Pepper, at least a couple, three times a week. And uh, let me see if we can find her. There she is. And I'm in my switchgrass field. You can see I got a lot of switchgrass around here. And uh, I'm finding a lot of deer beds. There's, if we look, there's, there's beds all over in here. You can see where they've been laying down. And, and uh, I'm just thinking, you know, if I keep looking, um, I'm going to find a shed antler because even though it is the uh, here in the what is it 24th of January, uh, I found them this early before, and I'm and I'm getting deer on camera, which I know have shed. So uh, I'm just going to walk around in here and just see what I can. Oh my gosh! Look right there! Look right there! Let's just zoom in. What's that right there? I'm certain. I don't think it's a bone. Let's see. I'm sure that's an yes, it is. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's that's just what you want. Oh man. I knew it. Gosh, awesome. Wow, first one this year. Great. I've noticed comments made on social media by landowners who I know and respect that repeat statement that switchgrass and or native warm season grass mixes are the worst deer habitat you can provide. I disagree and like so many things in habitat there's applications that are successful and those that aren't. I wanted to share with those willing to try something different in how I manage my warm season grass stands to balance the grass growth and the broad leaves while also supporting bedding and security concerns. First, use a controlled fire and burn your stands every two to four years. After burning, follow up with a single disking pass 
of about one and a half to two inches deep. This is a time when you can introduce more forbs, wildflowers, and other diverse plant communities into your stand of grasses. I don't know about you, but there's just something satisfying and exciting about watching a good buck moving around in a managed grass and plant community that you've created while he's busy checking known doe bedding areas inside of that habitat. The best habitat you can have should be utilized by all the sexes, not just bucks, and I'm very happy when I see that as well. One of the benefits in having these types of habitats is when combined with food sources, it's a great place to take your antlerless deer without disrupting known buck bedding areas. When manipulating mixed species grass habitat, and native broadleaves keep in mind that some clumps of woody growth can build the edges those prowling bucks like to stage, make scrapes, and leave their sign at. With today's ever increasing deer densities, it can really benefit your hunting ground by providing areas where bachelor groups can feed in, socialize, bed, and stage at while the local does are occupying the majority of the best habitats to give birth and raise their fawns during that late May and early June time period. Here, a bachelor group of 10 to 12 bucks utilize this field with a well-balanced population of native grasses, forbs, broadleafs, and wildflowers. There is, however, one exception when it comes to planting and using a thick stand of switchgrass monoculture in your habitat plants. And this is when you're using it as a plot divider, just as you see here, breaking up and reducing a deer's sight lines and offering a thick screening belt or edge along a thinly planted field in a line of 15 to 20 feet wide for hunting stand access to maintain your invisible hunter status on your property. In my next chapter of managing diverse, balanced, native warm season grass stands, I'll show you how I bring them in close for good shot opportunities. Until then, good luck and good habitat.